Hey guys, here for Angel Shield, Season 4, Episode 19, All the Madam's Men, and I was definitely really looking forward to this episode. You guys know I have been absolutely loving this Agents of Hydra arc. I think it's probably the most consistent of the three arcs that we've had. Not that the Ghost Rider and the uh, LMD arc was bad, but there was a point in the LMD arc where I did think it fell off a bit, and the Ghost Rider arc did take... Just a little while to get going. This arc, on the other hand, I think has been extremely consistent. Uh, it's been the most character-driven, and this was another really great episode. I'm really loving where we're going from here, but let's just get into this episode because I, like I said, really did love it. As usual, there's a lot to talk about, and we start off with newscaster Sunel Bakshi, and that's like our return of the episode, which I don't know if the show is going to give us like one return Per episode, but if that's where we're headed with this arc, I think it's gonna be kind of cool if they do that. Uh, but he gives a report on the death of the Patriot. As we know, the Patriot did sacrifice himself, and it seems like it's sticking. Like it doesn't seem like the Patriot's coming back. No, he's dead, and it's it's sad because you know I really like Jason O'Mara, but I, I think he actually did die. And like I said, I think it was a satisfying way for his character to go out. But in the cell, a guard comes in. Daisy breaks free of her Terra Genesis cocoon, and May knocks the man out. Daisy thanks May for her help, and more guards arrive outside, and the two women run out, returning fire. And May directs Daisy to the elevator leading to the garage, and Daisy covers her while she takes out the last of the guards. They go to the elevator, only to find Ada and two more soldiers waiting for them. And Daisy and May really have no choice but to drop their weapons, and Ada notes that none of the prisoners could escape their true nature, but yet May somehow could. So Daisy blasts Ada out of the window with her quake powers to the sidewalks, and Daisy now has her powers back, I guess now realizing, you know, who she really is. Now she's able to get her powers back, which I love seeing after three episodes of her not being able to use her powers. It was really rewarding to see her use those powers again, and she used them to the sidewalks, main stories below, and she then leaves with May. So, in the Superior's facility, which is, you know, back in the real world, Ada is automatically released from her connection to the framework, and we see a lot of this throughout the episode, a lot of her going in and out of the framework, because as we know, Ada's the one who's controlling all this, and she tells the Superior that she's recalibrating after a setback, and May is starting to question the narrative that she was programmed with, and Ada insists that it is only a slight complication, and the superior prepares to shoot May dead. So, however, he discovers that it's just not going to be that easy. He can't pull the trigger, and Ada explains that she built him, and her primary directive requires her to protect their captives. However, if they become a direct threat to the framework, then they no longer require protection, because they've now gone rogue, and they can't stick to the script, and... Daisy and, uh, and, you know, Simmons' deaths are now required, and the Superior says that he'll find them, because Daisy and Simmons are kind of disrupting everything that she built. So it does kind of make sense why she wants that, and I like seeing the Superior is still out there. I mean, he was such an intimidating villain in the second half of the season. I like that he is still out there, but in the framework, Mac turns off the newscast, and Ward suggests that they think retaliation and Mac tells him to think to the refuge to talk to the refugees and say they can have a better life. And Trip suggests that they review the plans he stole. Now it seems like they're keeping Trip on, which again, I love BJ Britt. I think he's a very charismatic, fun guy. So I'm glad to see he's sticking around. And Colson worries to Simmons that the movement could die with uh you know with Mace's death. But on the news, Sunel reports an inhumane attempt on Ada's life and the assassins remains at large, and Simmons figures that it has to be Daisy. Like, who else could have done it? It has to be Daisy, and this really jump-starts what the main narrative of this episode is. So, in May, then avoid the, the trolls, and May explains that when May sacrifices life for her, it made her question her allegiances, and Daisy realized that they've lost one, and May wonders how she can control her power so quickly. Like, again, this is a world where she doesn't have powers. Why all of a sudden can she use them? And her comrade says that she's had practice, but doesn't really go into details, because as we know, Daisy has had a lot of training um, with those powers. And she says that all she knows is the time and place to contact the Resistance. So a Hydra doctor tells Fitz and Alistair that the impact shattered her spine, and Fitz tells the medical staff to leave. Alistair tells his son that he should focus on the traitors that made them look weak. And he asks Fitz what exactly he's going to do. And Fitz says that he's going to send a message that betrayal will not be tolerated. And Alistair tells Fitz that he is the new head of Hydra. And again, you can tell he's still getting into Fitz's head. And Fitz is still 
pretty much unbreakable. Like, it seems like Fitz is just the one person who won't crack, even though May is starting to crack. Fitz just won't. And Lady Sunel comes to see Fitz. Fitz says that Ada is fine, and back she says that she appeared on his show that night. And in response, Fitz refuses and says that he wants the pu to he wants the public to be afraid. So that night, back she reports that Daisy's a member of the Inhumans First Resistance, and her accomplice is May. And he asks the public to do their civic duty and bring the killers to justice. And Ward sees the broadcast and says he has to find Daisy. You know that's his obvious you know primary goal. So once he leaves, Hope asks Mac if they would really kill Daisy, and Mac assures her that Daisy will be fine, explains that Hydra controls the news, and, you know, Hope is a character that I really am liking, because we really even had a childlike character on the show, and just for her to get exposed to all this, I mean, you know, to see Mac have that daughter in his life and have to explain all this to her, but also have her kind of be in the middle of it all, I mean, it's definitely a really well done arc for Mac, so... Grant tells, Col uh, tells Coulson that he's gathering a team to look for Daisy. Coulson says they should think it through and figures that they should wait for Daisy to contact them. And when Ward points out that he's a school teacher, Coulson explains he was approached to join S.H.I.E.L.D., but he refused because he was afraid of the responsibility. Remember, this Coulson isn't nearly as uh, determined, isn't nearly as brave as the Coulson that we're used to. This one um, turned down the offer, and... Now he really feels like he should have, like, it really wouldn't, you know, what did he have to lose, really? So, Ward says that he was serving time when he got the same offer from Victoria Hand, and Victoria told him that he could be a good man, and Daisy was the one who made him really believe it. And Ward insists on going, Colson tells him to try and not get killed. So Daisy and May then continue through the streets and prepare to steal a car. A woman sees them, they see a billboard declaring them traitors, and... At the headquarters, uh, Simmons and Tripp go over the stolen plans. She realizes the machinery is Darkhold Quantum Energy Tech, which I love that it's Darkhold because, again, it's connecting the three arcs together. A lot of people said these are three separate arcs, but no, I say they all really do connect together. This is a very good example of that. They figured that the device would need something more powerful than a hydroelectric dam. So Tripp overheard plans to send parts east to an oil drilling platform and... Simmons figures that the machine is being built on one of the superior's assets in the Baltic Sea, and they head out on a Quinajet to check it out. So, May tells Daisy that she saw Mace die, and they approach the rendezvous, and as a resistance member demands to know who they are, a Hydra SUV pulls up, the soldiers open fire, they wound the guard, and, and May and Daisy can get him inside just as the soldiers fire a grenade at them, and Kavanaugh then tells Colson and Mac that one of their field agents reported contact with May and Daisy, and... Colson says they'll check it out. He and Mac head out, and Mac asks one of the women, uh, Mrs. Lee, to watch Hope for a few hours. He tells his daughter that he has to go and asks Hope to start repairing uh, broken walkie-talkies, and they go, obviously, to rescue May and Daisy. So as Daisy barricades the door, May confirms that the fuel agent is still breathing. She figures that Hydra will call in an airstrike, and admits that she did the same thing against uh, Mace. And Daisy tells that she didn't know, but May points out that it doesn't change what she did. She hopes that if more people saw what May saw, then she'll fight back as well. And Fitz is sitting with an unconscious Ada and tells Alistair that her condition has changed. Alistair reports they found May and Daisy, and he has his men closing on their position. Fitz says he'll monitor the situation personally. Ada wakes up and tells Fitz to finish Project Looking Glass, and once it's completed, her body just won't matter. So Fitz agrees. Alistair says he'll deal with the traitors himself, and... Hydra soldiers then break in, May kills the first two, another one gets the drop on them, and Mac arrives and knocks him out. He then aims his gun at May, says he's not there to help the women who held Hope hostage, and Daisy insists that May helped her, and Colson arrives, says it's not a good time to be holding guns on their allies. He tells Mac that he trusts May, and she should, and uh, so should Mac, and after a moment, Mac lowers his gun. They head out through a secret prohibition tunnel, and as Gemma and, uh, I mean, Simmons and Tripp fly to the Baltic, Simmons spots an oil rig with a deeper structure. They land and slip in, but find no one there. And Simmons realizes that Ada's actually building it in the real world. And now she knows exactly what it's going to do. So the superiors looks at the prisoners. He tries to cut Colson's throat, but his body just won't let him. He apparently is incapable of killing, which I think is very interesting. The fact that even though Ada built him somehow, she didn't let him kill. There was some sort of modification that made sure he could not kill and Simmons then explains that Ada's found a way to have the machine create living tissue and Ada will, have, will use it to make herself 
into a real person, which makes a lot of sense. We've known from the beginning that Ada wants to be treated as a human, and if that's true, she herself wants to be human. So the superior tells the unconscious Coulson that when the machine is built, he and Ada will both be free, even though they have these sort of, you know, deformities and these limitations right now, um, he will make sure that when this machine is built, that they will both fully be human. So, Simmons tells Trip that Ada's whole plan has been to build herself a new body. She's surprised when Trip believes her, and he says that a week ago they were about a week out from completing the project, and in his lab, Fitz works on the machine. Alistair comes in, reports that the trades escape, and they lost seven agents. Fitz tells him to find and kill them no matter how many agents it takes, and Alistair says that if he wanted Fitz hysterical, he would have left him with his father. And uh, Fitz calms down, Alistair assures him that he'll follow him, and as Alistair goes, Fitz says that he can't tolerate failure even from his own father, so we realize that Alistair isn't his father. This is just a man that's getting into his head, which I thought was interesting, um, but... Colts and the others take May and Daisy back to S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, and a relief war greets Daisy, tells her that Simmons and Trip are on a recon mission, and... Ward explains that uh, Simmons told him about the other world and asks if Daisy uh, believes it. And Daisy misses she does and asks Ward to trust her because she knows a way home. He realizes that he's actually not going to be going with her. And it's this really nice moment, but it's not as tragic as I thought it was going to be. Just he comes to the realization that this is it. He's not going to be going. And he hopes Daisy would be the girl that he knew. Uh, Ward says that she, he's glad she's safe, and he walks away. He's okay with staying in the framework. You know, he's completely okay with it, because he knows that Daisy has a home, and he also has a home. His home is inside the framework, and it's just a really nice moment. It was a lot less tragic than I expected it to be, but I think all the more powerful because of it. So, Alistair goes to, uh, Radcliffe's cell, asks where the traitors are going. He wonders why May would help Daisy... Says he knows that Radcliffe came from the other world, and Radcliffe says the other world is the real world. And there, Alistair is a pathetic drunk that doesn't recognize Fitz's genius, and Alistair chuckles. He punches Radcliffe, said that Radcliffe knows nothing about him or his son, and he then proceeds to beat Radcliffe. And I like the way that Radcliffe is really getting to him. We've always known that Radcliffe and Fitz had this father-son-like bond, and this was a very well-done scene. I really like the way that Radcliffe is getting the better of this world, and he's kind of the one who is knowing how to, you know, survive here. He knows he's in the real world, and he's using that to his advantage, which I really do like seeing. So the team then watched the cam footage of the building collapsing on Mace, and May warns that if getting it out won't make up for what she did. You know, she still did kill Mace, and she feels very guilty for it, but it is, in fact, a start, and... Daisy says she knows a way to destroy Hydra for good, and if they can get to the back door, then all their problems will just go away, but she needs all the help that they can get. Daisy insists that none of it will matter in the real world and tells Coulson it's the only chance to wake people up. Coulson says they need a way to divide Hydra's forces to save themselves by saving the world, and as Bakshi flirts with an aide in his studio, the Resistance finds a way to break in, they take everyone captive, and when Bakshi says they won't slander Hydra, Daisy blasts him, says the facts will speak for themselves, Fitz finishes the machine design, he then goes to Ada, tells her that it's done. He assures her that her new body will be what she was meant to be. Fitz asks him to take him with her, and Ada tells him that she hoped that he'd say that, and Coulson then puts on a suit, May stares at him. She says that she thinks they've done it before, and advises him to just tell the truth. Meanwhile, Daisy tries to lock the system so Hydra can't block the feed, and Ward says that he'll hold the fort as long as he can while the others get out. He doesn't want Daisy to think anything that he's like the Ward in her world, because he's not. He's a completely different guy entirely, and I'm sad because I do want to see this Ward. I really like what we've gotten out of Brett Deer here. I think he's really been able to channel a lot more emotion out of this role than he was in the Grant role. That role was always... It was a good role, but it was very one-note. Like, you always knew that he was bad, and... He realizes his real-world counterpart is dead. War, and I like that he realizes it. Like, he comes to this realization that, holy shit, I'm actually dead. And he wonders if he'll get his sky back once Daisy's gone. Daisy misses she doesn't really know if that's going to happen. But at the same time, she's happy that he's going to stay there. And she tells Ward that she didn't totally understand her Ward until she met the framework version. You know, all the time, she always hated him. But she realizes that he does have layers, and that the only reason that he really was that way is because he was so loyal to Hydra. And I feel like if Ward wouldn't have been as loyal to Hydra, um, this might have been the Ward she might have gotten. So, 
She admits there was some good in him all along. Daisy hopes that Ward Sky does come back to him. It's, it's a really nice farewell between the two. I think this is going to be um goodbye for a while, but Alistair tells Fitz that Radcliffe hasn't talked yet. Fitz says they will convince him by giving me a reason to live. The team prepares to leave the studio. Coulson tells Ward that, that uh, Mace would have been proud of what they did. Daisy wishes Ward good luck and goes. Ward activates the transmission. He begins to tape. Coulson says that what Hydra said about Mace was actually a lie and runs footage from the body cam showing that Hydra called in the airstrike. He says they now have the chance to all be patriots and asks if they would hold Hydra responsible. So he's starting to, you know, build this group against Hydra. Kavanaugh runs to Ward, tells him that there are people outside, they're there to help. Across the nation, people watch Coulson's speech. He says he's not a history teacher. He's Phil Coulson, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was such an awesome scene. But then we get to the ending here. We see in the real world the superior. He's looking at the constructed machine. Ada tells him that once the machine is completed, her restrictions and the superior's will be lifted, and he tells Ada that, that uh, Simmons and Daisy are aboard a shield jet, and once they get a lock, his men will shoot it down. So yes, they are still planning on assassinating both of them, and that is the way this episode ends. Really great stuff overall, but let's just get this episode, and where this is going to take us for the last three episodes of the season. So overall, guys, this was another really strong episode. I really like what we had going on here. But let's first talk about Ada and the Superior, because while you do kind of feel for Ada because, you know, she wants to be human, she wants to have a human skin, she obviously is going way too far. We obviously don't want to see Daisy and Simmons die. I doubt they're going to succeed. I, I don't think they're going to kill Daisy and Simmons. There's just no way that's going to happen. They're just too beloved of characters, and I doubt they're actually going to die. I mean, maybe the show will surprise me and actually kill them off. Who knows? I didn't think Radcliffe was going to die when he did. Um, but we'll have to see what happens there. So, Daisy and Simmons, um, I don't know what's gonna happen there, but I do know they're probably gonna get out of the framework very soon, which I'm surprised at. I didn't think they were gonna get out of the framework nearly, um, as quickly as it seemed like they were going to. I didn't think it was gonna happen until the end of the season, but it seems like they are going to get out of the framework. So, we'll have to see the way that all works out. Um, I definitely mentioned seeing if they actually are successful with getting out. I don't know if it's actually gonna work out for them, but we'll have to see... What happens there? Um, as far as Ward, I really like what we got with Ward in this episode because one, I really like Ward in general. I like the way they've kind of redeemed him and given us a different type of Ward, more of an emotional Ward who actually does have a moral ground and actually does care a lot more about human beings in general than the other Ward did. He's not nearly as cold and calculating. I mean, he's still just as calculated, but he's a lot more. <coughs> He's a lot more nice and just, uh, he's a lot more nice of a guy. He definitely cares a lot more about the team in general. And I really did feel bad for me because, yeah, I mean, he, it is very sad to come to that realization that you're not real, that, you know, you just, you're a hologram that lives in this world. And it's sad to see. But is he going to get his Sky back? We'll have to see if that really does work out for me because, I mean, he does love Sky. Those two did have some type of relationship, but the question is, is he going to cease to exist? Because, I mean, if they destroy the framework, does that mean that Ward dies as well? Uh, it's going to be very sad that does happen, but I've loved what we've gotten out of Brett Deer in these four episodes. I think they've really done a great job of redeeming him and giving us a different type of Ward than we've gotten. Um, just in general, I've really liked this side. I've really liked this side of Ward, so I hope we get more of that because I really did like what we got of him here, and uh, Brett Deer in general has really impressed me this entire season, so I hope he's not done. I hope we see more of him in the next few episodes, even if it's like a little bit in the next episode. I just hope we see more of him because I really have liked what we've gotten out of him throughout this season, um, but we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, as far as Fitz, again, it seems like Fitz is really the only person who doesn't seem to be cracking. Like, no matter what happens, it doesn't seem like Fitz is able to crack. We'll have to see what actually is going to happen here, uh, if Fitz is actually going to come to this world, because, I mean, they're gonna have to recruit Fitz at some point, but if, you know, they can't, then I guess Fitz is just a lost cause. Is he gonna stay in the framework? That's something I'm definitely very interested in, is how are they going to get Fitz out of there? Uh, he is still being, you know, tortured by Alistair. I feel like at this point, Radcliffe is going to be the one to break him. I feel like that's what's going to happen. You're like, Radcliffe, um, he's going to somehow 
get through to Fitz because it wasn't Simmons. That whole thing is kind of done. Radcliffe, I think, is going to be the one to get through to Fitz because, again, they had that father-son-like bond. And the conversation with Alistair, I think, kind of sums up what's going to happen here. I think he's going to try to get Fitz to remember what's going on. It didn't seem to work before, but we'll have to see what really happens there if Fitz is going to break of this villainous plot, which... I kind of don't want him to. I like what we've gotten out of this actor. This actor is really into channel a lot more darker energy than he usually does, and I kind of like seeing him as a villain. I think he actually has done a really great job, so I hope we get him for at least one more episode. Like, I want to see the Doctor for at least one more. I, I like what we've gotten out of, you know, I, I don't want to see him be evil for the rest of the season, but I want to see him for at least one more episode. I really like what we've gotten out of him um, for the most part. Um, as far as... You know, May. I like that May is starting to crack, that she really feels bad for what happened with the Patriot because, I mean, yeah, she is a direct cause of his death, but she can't really do anything about it. You know, he died and, you know, he died because he wanted to. He sacrificed himself for them. And I like that she is regretful, but at the same time, there's really not much she can do in terms of that. So I don't really know what's going to happen there. Uh, I'm sure May is going to get out of the framework, definitely, but we'll have to see the way that turns out. Is the Patriot going to come back to life? I don't really know. We'll have to see what happens there. My biggest question is Radcliffe. As we know, Radcliffe basically died uh, before Daisy and Simmons ever went into the framework. So does that mean that he's dead in the real world? Is he slowly dying, or did that just not happen? Is he going to be completely okay after? I don't really know. We'll have to see the way that all turns out. That's something that I still don't fully understand and also trip is trip also going to exist in the real world is he somehow gonna get out of there i doubt he's actually gonna get out of there i like what we've gotten out of him i really like bj Britt on the show i know he's wanting to come back for a while um but regardless i don't think that trip is going to come back i think that what we got of trip in these episodes uh, i think is what we're gonna see of him i, I don't think we're gonna see trip again unfortunately I, it's sad because again i like bj Britt. i think he's a very talented charming just a fun guy uh but uh I don't think we're going to see him anymore. I think that's kind of, we're going to see him in the framework and they're just going to go. Uh, but again, I could be wrong because, again, there was another episode. I could be very wrong with that. Uh, and then Mac and Hope, I like what we got out of them. I like that, you know, Mac is trying to help Hope and everything. But Mac, you know, we don't know if Hope is going to exist in this real world, what's going to happen there. Just in general, I don't really know what we're going to get in these next three, uh, three episodes. But at the same time, I'm very intrigued. This was another really great episode, and I'm definitely going to give Answer Shield Season 4, Episode 19, All the Madness Men, a 4.5 out of 5, or an A-, minus. another really great episode, a lot of really great stuff going on here, a lot of stuff that I think is very well setting up um, the foreseeable future, but I don't really know where the show's going to go, and I really like that unpredictable nature the show has had this season, I feel like they're going to stick with it here, and at this point, there really is no telling what's going to happen in those last three episodes. So over, guys, Murray, this episode of Ains the Shield. The most you guys saw this episode overall. Left your thoughts in it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for the latest episode of Ains the Shield. Uh, and I will definitely see you guys for that. Okay, bye.